Excuse me. You don't mind talking? I'm on a live stream internet show. I'm actually filming kind of right now. You don't mind talking a bit about what you guys do? I'd love to. Okay, here's my card. Yeah. Here's my website. Yeah. And I do put it up again later, so yeah. it's going to be on again after. Then it has you can watch it whenever. Um, yeah. So, have I got anything in my teeth? No, it's very. It's, uh, what's your name? My name's Kent. Okay. We're at the Patch Booth, and we're with Kent. And Kent, can you please tell me about what Patch is? Well, Patch enables people, uh, well, what we aim to enable people without the access to land to grow food or the basic knowledge on how to grow food, the ability to do so. So this is our first product. Uh, we, I saw people um, making these sub-irrigated planters out of pop bottles by taking the top and cutting it and then inverting it. We use a fabric called Pellon, which has a great wicking quality to wick the water up into a growing medium. A traditional potting soil works very well. Uh, the benefit is, is that you can't overwater or underwater, and you typically get a greater yield because uh, the plant always has the, just the right amount of water. Uh, the other benefit is, is that it uses much less water, so very water efficient. Uh, and uh, this is the first of, of what we hope to be a series of many products that will be uh, sub-irrigated planters. We're working on one right now, we're going to call it Dirt Bag. It uh, looks like a classic duffel and has a water reservoir in it and we aim to grow leafy greens in it. These are all for growing herbs. So we've got mint here, basil, lemon balm, uh, some spearmint. So uh, the other thing is, is that these bottles are collected by um, downtown Lower East Side residents typically. They uh, bring them into an organization called United We Can that accepts large volumes of recyclables from, uh, from independent people. And then they clean the bottle for us, remove the label, and uh, we pay them to do that. So we're supporting a social enterprise by doing so. And then partial proceeds go back to Soul Food, which is an urban agriculture effort uh, for people with traditional barriers to traditional employment on the downtown Lower East Side. So that's our story. So come and see us at letspatch.com and uh, help collaborate on uh, developing products to enable people to grow food. It's a great idea to use bottles for another product, right? And instead of yeah. just putting it or throwing it out, you can just flip around and, and give other people, and also giving them people on the Lower East Side a means of accomplishment, right? They they, yeah. they can see what they're doing, and instead of going nowhere, like, oh, it's going to plants and food. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's, you get tangible results. You, you, you're actually producing something that's productive and, and good for people. Um, we're actually considering, what I'd love to do is make some out of these jute bags as well. Uh, find a way to make a reservoir that's not out of plastic, and then uh, have some people make the, the jute bags into a container that could sit on the reservoir and act as a sub-irrigated planter. It's an idea I got from, um, well, once again, seeing it on the internet, but in refugee camps, they take three coffee pots, they drill holes in the top two coffee pots, they take up uh, the, the pots and they put them in the middle of a sack, and then they fill around the coffee pots with soil, and then cut slits in the, in the side of the sack and then plant in the side, uh, and then they just pour the water in the middle and it pours out on the sides of the soil, and they're growing their own food in refugee camps. And the benefit is twofold, is that it also gives them a sense of purpose, because when you're in a refugee camp, you, you aren't able to, there's really nothing to you do, and uh, without, you know, having a, a job or some, some you know, some initiative to, to, to you know, it's hard to feel self-worth without, without doing anything. It's hard. Uh, yeah, so um, so I'm wondering if you know we can't borrow that idea in some way and, and uh, use that to make containers. My ultimate goal for the business is to uh, emulate the, the organization Tom's Shoes. You buy a pair of shoes, they give a kid in Africa a pair of shoes, but rather what I would do is if you bought one of our products, we could uh, put some money aside to help develop uh, urban agriculture gardens 
gardens and food deserts in North America. And a food desert is where someone needs to travel uh, a great distance in order to get to fresh produce. Whole Foods is certainly not setting their uh, stores up in any low-income neighborhoods. It's neither is Walmart or Save On Foods. And what happens is the residents of those low-income neighborhoods are only left with the option of their convenience store where they can get a Twinkie for breakfast and some Chef Boyardee for lunch and, and maybe a bowl of ramen noodles. So there's no access to, to fresh, healthy food, let alone, I mean, it's, it's really only cheap processed food that they have access to. And people tend to eat what is in front of them. Yes. So uh, there's a number of uh, community gardens and urban agriculture efforts that are sprouting up in North America to address these food deserts. And I would love to, uh, to support those in some way um, with Patch. So we're also um, working to develop a portable container system for Soul Food. There's a developer in town that has said, if you give us a portable system, if you can make your farm portable, we can give you three months notice, we can move you to another one of our sites, we can give you a few of our vacant building sites. Uh, so we're trying to use Canada Place sales fabric um, to, to make a container out of fabric for our soul food to use. So we've devised a system with some PVC pipe and some rebar and a pallet where we can make a four foot by four foot container that is uh, transportable by four lift or crane truck yeah so we're working on that and hopefully we'll have those um we'll have those ready although the, the sites we probably won't be build, really building those farms until the fall but uh that's one of our other initiatives as well it is also i find it really good even for your little kids who they can see something growing themselves and they can appreciate it a little more and then they'll like, if they don't like a vegetable and you let them grow the vegetable, they're going to like it because they watered it and they put their care into it. Yeah, I'm sure there's actually some truth to that. Yeah, well, my nephew did the same, does the same thing before he never liked tomatoes, but he was not, once he grew it and he would say, I want this tomato. So take me out to the garden, I'd pick up a tomato that he wants and then he liked it all of a sudden because... It, he picked it himself and he grew it himself and he watered it and you know he pulled out the weeds inside it so it gives him a lot of encouragement I mean the other thing is is that that tomato probably really did taste better it does they you know, do it wasn't they do, and I think it's true. I had a, I was, we had a few friends in the states who said it's too expensive to eat vegetables, and there's some place in the states where you can buy like a box of burgers for five ninety nine. Yeah, exactly. But to buy a vet, to buy a tomato is maybe you know a yeah, dollar. Or head of broccoli or cauliflower. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember which food film it was, but they did that comparison. You know, they went into the community to the the produce store and they looked at the vegetables, but then Burger King was across the street. And you get the you know. The super sized meal, and really they're getting a larger volume of food but low nutrient value. So, exactly, yes, yeah. So, what do you know with the children and growing food? One of the benefits that one of a woman told me was really taught her son patience, you know, that he then started to understand the timeline of just you know how long it takes to do things, and, yeah. And that was one of the benefits, and I found that kind of interesting. Well, yeah, I so. used to live in a house where we had backyard chickens, right? And the kids loved it because they would, I would say, okay, go and find an egg so there'd be an egg hidden somewhere and I'll, I'll show them where it is uh, they would find the eggs and they would realize that the chicken makes the egg yeah you know so it was exciting for them and it was exciting that I, they dug up worms and gave the worms to the chickens and like they were fascinated by it and they had, uh, just saw what, what a chicken is you know instead of this cartoon on television or this no name thing yeah, well, it's it's pretty great the uh, the resurgence of, of uh, you know interest in food that's happening these days. I think it's definitely um, you know people are aware of, of the commercialization of food and, and uh, you know farmers markets have grown 350 percent in the past uh, 10 years. Uh, vegetable seed sales now surpass flower seed sales in the home and garden center application. The American oh, yeah. Gardening Association reports that first time garden 
partners are going directly to food. So there's a strong desire for people to reconnect with their food, and uh, I think it's really great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Thank you so much. Hey, and thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. Check your website out. Uh, I'm going to take yeah. your card. I'm going to check you guys out a bit. Yeah, we're uh, still developing our website, but we do have a, a one-page site up right now. It's okay. letspatch.com. We want to uh, collaborate with people as much as possible to uh, design our products and give them products that um, that are useful to them. Yeah. So, you know, with, that's one of our ideas is really to crowdsource our products and get as much user input as possible. Exactly, exactly. Maybe yeah. someone has an idea. Because I think a lot of people who come from smaller countries as well have these brilliant ideas. Yeah. Because they had no other choice. Right. They had to make it. Yeah. They're, they're okay, we go, we're not going to go and buy something. We're going to make it. Well, and usually it's simple design. And simple oh, yeah. design is always, the, you know, usually the most effective. It's like right? like this simple. Like that, yeah. like, I, like you get a ball, put it upside down, and, 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 and that, you know, it's like that's how ideas come about. So I think a lot of smaller countries and the smaller nations and poor nations have these great ideas because they really have to come up with no money. They have no money and they have to come up with a resource. So Yeah, they're very innovative that way. Exactly, yes. Yeah. yes okay, thank you again. And I'll, I'll look on your site and I want to keep up to date with what you guys are doing. Yeah, keep, keep posting with us. We're going to uh, hopefully grow fast and do some really amazing things. And, and if you're at any events, are you doing something you want live streaming, just let me know. Drop me an email. I would probably come around and if I'm not doing anything, I would live stream an event because because I think it's really interesting to, to to have people grow their own food. It's very important. Awesome. Well, I've got some interesting guerrilla some guerrilla marketing techniques, and you know, we, we think about doing some flash mobs and uh, some fun. I've been like a that. part of a lot of flash mobs already. Have you? Yeah, improv anywhere. I've uh, no, a few flash mobs. So Dynamite. yeah, so they're really fun, and a lot of people. It's very, it's very good for awareness. Yeah. I did it one for uh, the tulips. Uh, uh, for cancer and so they're very make people really aware of stuff so yeah I should uh, I should definitely um, I'm gonna come up I'm gonna think up of a way to do it so here I'd, lo I'd love to give you a, one of these flavors to take with oh, you oh would. thank you yeah. oh my god thank you so much you're very welcome oh awesome I'm gonna put that in the most Ethical yeah, so like seriously, I've done a lot of this stuff. I have a few, like I would, if you did a flash mob, I would live stream it because it'd be really fun. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some newspaper in between the top and the bottom and just protect that. Okay. Because I think flash mobs are, and they're, 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 they're so much fun. And I'm all about like guerrilla marketing. Like, that's what I'm, I'm all about guerrilla marketing. That's how I run my network is pretty much by guerrilla marketing. Sweet. Like Twitter and Facebook and, and just putting up these flyers all over the city. Nice. Yeah, well, I, we, you know, my, my tagline yeah, is feed yeah, yourself. Yeah, so. well, what's going on? Um, yeah, so these are self-irrigated planters. All right. Thanks again, and thank you for the, uh, here, right? the planter. So it you bet, man. The moisture. Spread the word. I right, definitely will. Thank you. So you only need to water, like, put water in there whenever. Well, that's really good. So that actually, the first part was to say, what do normal organizations do to engage with audiences? They think about the first thing in their mind. Okay. Now you can. never said any of those, right? So if you can tell, maybe that doesn't work. That's what I want to do. As other ways. Thing. So the first one was, uh, was translation, um, but uh, we're going to offer some more. Time to eat.